Juma Mubarak. I was planning on going to Juma today actually, but I realized that I have an important Zoom meeting that I scheduled and for some odd reason I wasn't thinking when I scheduled it and scheduled it right in the middle of Juma. I just came back to my apartment. I'm gonna do the meeting from here. It's just too chaotic to be doing meetings on campus. I have a midterm on Tuesday that I need to study for. It's a closed book exam for my South African apartheid history class. I'm making my way through the study guide for that. So I'm almost done. Goal is to finish it today. And then I have a paper due on Sunday for my resistance seminar. And that's pretty much done. I just need to go through and edit it. I feel like since taking this seminar, the process of writing has changed a lot. Like I feel like my writing has really, really improved so much this semester because with this class it's like 15 people there's no gsi it's like you directly being graded by the professor and he like gives us feedback every week so i feel like every week it's been really really helpful in like showing me personally like what i need to work on in terms of my writing like i've never gotten this level of feedback i can give any advice to anyone who's in college it's to take a seminar or take like smaller style classes like this where you can really get really good one-on-one -on -one contact with the professor and like work closely with the professor to like improve whatever skill you want to improve like it's Definitely, if you can take advantage, especially at a public school, it's like a great resource to take advantage of. Friend is coming up late next week. I'm so excited. We're gonna attempt to take my grad picks, but I don't know if that's gonna work out just because the weather has been so on and off. She's bringing my sister's Canon G7X. I have like a very specific vision and I just really want them to come out nicely. Getting grad picks done can be really, really expensive and hard to do. And I feel like also it's really nice to take grad picks with someone that you're comfortable with because I don't know about y'all, but it's so hard for me to pose. Like I am so bad at posing. We're gonna be doing that late next week, but I did want to give you guys like a little update in terms of my reading. First off, I finished reading Sula by Toni Morrison. This was such an incredible read. I had to read it for my resistance seminar and I have always wanted to read a Toni Morrison book. I tried to read Beloved last year and couldn't get through it. It was just really dense and the writing was really hard to understand. But this book is way more accessible, I feel like, and easier to understand. Toni Morrison's writing is just so chef's kiss. She has such intricate and like advanced writing that even though this is very accessible, there's so many layers behind this book and there's so much that like I even missed when I was reading it. So it was nice to be able to like talk about it in the seminar and like hear insights from other people's interpretations and also just hear stuff that the professor had to say about the book. Rated a five out of five stars. It was one of the most incredible books that I have ever read and I think everyone should read it. I feel like if you're trying to get into Toni Morrison, like this is a great book to start. It's about these two girls, Sula and Nell. Sula is a dark-skinned black woman and Nell is a light-skinned black woman. And they live in this predominantly black community. It takes place over the course of 30 or 40 years, but they meet as young girls and they become friends. Sula is really just kind of this like social pariah in her community. She's perceived as like an outcast and just like a very immoral person. Now really fits into the mold of their like the community's social expectations of what a young black woman should act and be like. They have such a strong friendship from a young age, but as their friendship splinters and as you see them fall into conflict, it becomes this kind of discussion of like, who's the moral center of this book? Like, Sula's the social outcast. And on paper, she seems like she is the one that is morally deficient. But is she really? And I just really loved kind of that conversation. There's all of these other really, really well-developed complex characters too. And Toni Morrison is just such a careful writer. Her first chapter is four pages. And apparently the, my professor was saying that she spent three months writing just four pages. So every single word is written with craft and care. Everyone needs to experience a Toni Morrison book. Another book that I just re recently finished last night was I finished listening to the audiobook of The Other American. It was about this Moroccan family and it's a little bit of a murder mystery, but it's not like the central premise of the story. Basically this father gets hit by a car at the beginning of the book and it follows his entire family in the aftermath of that but primarily his oldest daughter 
is she the oldest? She might be the second daughter, but one of his daughters who is very creative and really just kind of struggles with her place in her family. I really loved all of the different perspectives that are told in this book and I think it was just enjoyable, enjoyable read. I think the audiobook was a great way to consume it and I had a good time. So I finished that th last night, rated that one a 4.5 out of five stars and i'm currently listening to the audiobook of yellow face by rf kuang i started listening started reading this on my kindle last semester but i lent my sister my kindle for the semester because she wanted to like try my kindle and see if she likes it so i just ended up getting the audiobook for it i'm about to start a place for us by fatima farheen mirza again i read this last semester and it i think it was like one of my like top five favorite books of last year some of my friends wanted to start like a little muslim book club which i'm very excited we we're actually supposed to have the first meeting today and then they postponed it to next weekend so we have to read the first four pages for that um which is like about 100 pages of the book but i'm excited because this was a really really good book and i feel like a book that after i finished it i wanted to talk to people about it but it's like not one of those like popular books on book talk i feel like books that have like a lot of layers and like conflicting perspectives are great for book clubs just because everyone can kind of share like their interpretation and like it just makes the conversation a lot more interesting i'm really excited to reread this again if you guys have any book recs please let me know because i'm trying to re-enter my reading era and i have a couple credits on audible that are kind of like building up that i need to use this has been my most recent obsession it's so good Morning. Happy Saturday. We're going to the gym this morning. I have a lot to do today. studying for hours it feels like i've been switching between this quizlet that i made for my exam and reading passing by laura neela neela lorson because i need to finish this by tomorrow i don't really love being indoors i'm studying indoors but when midterms comes around it is that serious something came over me and I was like I've been so cooped up and I feel like I've just been like in the same spot all day long and I know myself I know when I switch environments like that really helps me study for a long period of time when it comes to studying for long periods of time I definitely get burnt out from studying in my room for long peri periods of time and I almost need the ambiance of a third space to keep me motivated
I turned in my paper. I'm currently studying for my South African history exam. It's definitely a lot. I feel like I'm a little bit in over my head. It's really hard because I haven't, I've, we haven't really ever studied South African history. Like American history does not touch on South Africa at all whatsoever, which is honestly such a shame, but it's like, I'm really familiarizing myself with like all of these new concepts, all of these like new ethnic groups. I just knew nothing about South, Af South Africa except for Nelson De Mandela going into this class. So it's just kind of a lot that I'm definitely trying to memorize before Tuesday, but we have some time. You guys, I'm actually so shocked because these flowers, these are the flowers that I got from the Galentines that I went to two weeks ago and they're still, they're still good. Like I've changed the water every few days, but I don't know who brought those flowers because we did like a little flower exchange thing where we were making our own bouquets, but they've been going on strong for so long. Like it's actually crazy. My roommate and I have watched, finished watching the Avatar live action TV show this week and I'm not gonna lie you guys I actually kind of enjoyed it I was definitely pleasantly surprised like going into it my expectations were in hell um after 2010 I can just never trust an avatar the last airbender live action but I actually didn't hate it like I feel like a lot of people on social media are really hating on it I definitely had a lot of critiques I definitely feel like Char Aang's character his acting was not it also Azula's character, they did her dirty. They wrote her character off a little bit. But I feel like they added a lot of character development and complexity to specifically Zuko's character. I also think that they made like a lot of interesting changes with Katara's character. I think you really do see a lot of the development added though with Zuko's character because they really made the strategic choice to like take his a lot of his like redemption arc that comes in season three and really start laying the groundwork for it in season one and i actually really love that because he goes through one of the most beautiful redemption arcs i have ever seen in fiction and so it's really incredible to like see it kind of start in season one also that last episode was so good like they were definitely saving their budget for that last episode so i feel like once i finished the show i was actually like i actually low-key had an open mind I feel like if they continue the energy of that last episode, they could actually have a really, really good show. Like, I understand why people don't like the live action, but also let's give them their flowers. I've been burning some bahur. I lost like my little bahur holder, so I have this like very ratchet setup over here where I just like put the tin foil on this like old candle that's like pretty much, it's pretty much out, but it smells so good. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on how other people are pre prepping for Ramadan really to get me in the mindset of Ramadan and also to help me figure out like what I want from Ramadan this year and I was watching a video and a guy was saying that the purpose of Ramadan is to achieve taqwa that is the ultimate purpose of Ramadan to be constantly God conscious and God fearing on a daily basis that is the objective of Ramadan and we have to remember that in everything we do. A lot of the times when it comes to Ramadan, we can burn ourselves out and we forget to give ourselves grace. And I think it's important to do things that will continue to give yourself grace to take Ramadan at your own pace. Finished my history exam. It actually went pretty well. Like it definitely went better than I expected. I was so stressed out because it was like 300 years of history, all of these names, all of these dates. I just got really lucky. The stuff that I happened to memorize just ended up being on the midterm. I'm so happy. I feel like this past week I've been working like a dog. I had two papers due this weekend, this midterm, and now we're like smooth sailing for the next couple weeks until finals hit. I'm enjoying myself. I'm like sitting in the women's faculty lounge area, which is by Haas, the business school. And I think I'm gonna probably gonna stay here for like three more minutes, soak in the sun, the little sun that we have, and then go to Haas and catch up on my readings. But the weather has been very on and off. Alhamdulillah, the weather has changed, and it says that it's not gonna rain on Thursday, which is when I'm planning on taking my grad picks. 
hopefully it doesn't change and it's not too overcast or it's not drizzling. I have my locations and everything picked out. I got my work shifts covered for that day. So we pretty much have like the entire day to go around campus and take pictures. I just wanna make sure like I'm happy with my grad pictures because these are like your grad pictures. Like you wanna be happy with it. But I feel like I've like walked around campus a lot and like usually when I'm walking around campus and I see a location that I think is cute or that I like, I just write it down so that when I was like figuring out like where I wanted to take my grad pics, I had like a decent list of places to take them. I was gonna go to the gym tonight, but I honestly have a migraine. We're just gonna have a chill night in. I think I'm gonna make dinner. I think I wanna make like pasta for dinner. So let's do a little trip. I picked up this organic pepper dill pasta nets. It's basically like pasta but whole wheat pasta and they come it's like the really nice i think it's called fettuccine fettuccine style pasta but it's like the thicker spaghetti grabbed some brown eggs y'all already know switched to kale salad i've been obsessed green apples i got a thing of blackberries because i think i want to do french toast and i feel like berries on french toast is always chef's kiss. I feel like one of the most popular frozen food items at Trader Joe's is like the chicken cilantro wontons. They're just so good. You can like boil them, you can pan fry them, and they're such an easy like thing to throw in. Greek yogurt. And then I got some ground turkey because I'm going to do some pasta tonight. I've been listening to the On Purpose podcast with Michelle Obama. It's like an episode from like January, so it's a little bit of a backlisted episode, but I'm like catching up on that podcast. I love On Purpose. Like, I feel like Jay Shetty is just such such a cool guy. Like, I feel like he's so wise. He has, like, such, like, an air of grace. And I feel like he's really, really good at just making his guests, like, bring out the best aspects in every conversation and bringing out, like, the most positive, grounding aspects of all of his guests. So I always love listening to his podcast episodes, especially, like, with celebrities because I feel like he just does a really good job at like facilitating a conversation that is just very peaceful and it's like you get all of these all of this wisdom from all of these celebrities and I feel like you get a side of these celebrities that you don't normally get in the media. Good morning everyone. Today is Saturday and I was gonna have a chill weekend because I've had the most chaotic week. Didn't vlog these past few days while Sophia was, was visiting because it was just very chaotic. Especially the day that we took my grad photos. I'm actually so happy with how my grad photos came out. Like she's a real friend because she literally came and we spent five hours taking grad photos. We used my old Canon G7X. This is the Canon G7X Mark II. I used to use this to vlog a few years ago and then I gave it to my sister before I found out that you can actually take really nice digital pictures on here. Went viral on TikTok like this in the past two years and everyone's like going out and buying it and I don't think people realize like it's, it was actually meant to be a vlog camera that's why it's so expensive but we took pictures on that and that was my first like first YouTube camera. So I got that back when I was a sophomore or junior in high school. My parents got it for my 17th birthday. So it is old. It's it's a five year old camera and it just happened to be acting up. Like I was taking my grad photos and I was actually panicking because the first 45 minutes we couldn't get it to work. The flash wouldn't go off. When we would take the pictures, it would just be all like white. It was really, really bad. I was like FaceTiming my sister to see like what settings to use. And it turns out we were using the correct settings. Something's up with the camera where like the flash only goes off like once every 10 photos. So that's why it took, partially why it took so long to get through all of my grad photos because the flash is not going off. We ended up taking the grad photos and I got really, really good grad photos. I'm actually so happy with like how they came out. They came out exactly how I had envisioned and like what I wanted. I don't want to spoil too much because I'm like, I want it to be a surprise when they go live on Instagram. So I'll probably also end up like posting them on TikTok and everything. I think when it comes to grad photos, it's not just the camera you use, but it's also the location because you can get a digital camera. Like I even have like a 
another digital camera that I could have potentially used, but I feel like with the G7X it's like always very nice. And it has that like in-between film and digital camera kind of look. I actually left yesterday morning and then yesterday was really busy. I had like two events. I had book club because I joined a Muslim book club this semester. Some friends started a Muslim book club and we're actually reading A Place for Us. So I'm rereading that. And then I had a vision board night for fam. I'll show you guys my vision board. I hung it up in the in the kitchen. It looks a little weird because there was like a painting above it um, that my roommate did, but she took it out. She took it out this morning, but she's gonna put it back. So it'll this wall will look more proper, like it'll look better. But this is what it looks like. I feel like it's just so cute. Like I'm obsessed. And then of course, like the Moi Tani Nate in the corner of the image to that. Really, really cute. It came out really well. So we just have a bunch of flowers and I'm obsessed because these are the flowers that I, the spread that I made for my grad photos. And then these were like the flowers of the week. We are like thinking about decorating for Ramadan somehow. I think my roommate's thinking about like ordering lanterns because I feel like lanterns are very like Ramadan. And I want to get those like long candlesticks and candlestick holders that I was talking about in my last vlog that I couldn't get from Dollar Tree. I think I'm going to just order those off of Amazon. Today I'm going to San Francisco to hang out with some friends. I'm going to meet up with Milgo. We're going to go to like a coffee shop and do work in San Francisco. I'm so excited because she's been like telling me about this coffee shop that's like has a waterfront view and it's like near Ocean Beach. Let me see if she actually texted me the name to it. Oh, it's called Andy Town. It's it's in it's near the Ocean Beach area if you're ever in San Francisco. So I've been wanting to go check out that place. I have a lot to do this weekend, so I'm just gonna pack like a little tote bag and get some work done. And then later tonight we're getting dinner with the rest. Tomorrow is like the last day before Ramadan, so I really want tomorrow to be like a very, very much like a reset day and like really just be resetting for Ramadan. In the morning we're going to breakfast. I'm going to breakfast with my roommate and a friend. There's this Algerian bakery on San Pablo Avenue that I tried this week with Sofia. It is so good. I posted about it on my story, but it's called Belmo Cafe on San Pablo a Avenue. You guys should definitely check it out. The owners are so sweet. They're Algerian. They have like a bunch of different like Algerian pastries and then French pastries. And their prices are really good. Like I always complain about how like expensive everything is in Berkeley. You can literally go and get a latte and it'll be $8. But this place is really, really good. We got like, I think five or six items came out to like $20. We just got a bunch of different stuff and then we tried like different things and we had a lot of leftovers, so. And they were so sweet. They were like giving us samples of things. Just a really cute like spot. It definitely needs to be hyped up more. But we're gonna go tomorrow for breakfast as like our last breakfast for before Ramadan. And then I pretty much just wanna spend tomorrow like resetting for Ramadan. I think some of the things that I wanna do is definitely like clean my room clean my space, tidy up the kitchen, go grocery shopping for any things that I need, maybe meal prep a couple things. I definitely want to journal and I haven't like written down my intentions for Ramadan. I have them kind of percolating in the back of my mind but I haven't like written them down so definitely write them down. Oh I need to make a Nasheed playlist. I meant to do that and I just never got around to it. I really want to like not listen to any music this Ramadan. Last year was like the first Ramadan where I did that. I really want to just stick to that again and really just limit the amount of time that I'm listening to music and replace it more with listening to Quran and listening to Islamic podcasts. So just a goal setting, goal setting, that type of stuff. Because we're starting Ramadan on a Monday this year. I kind of like it. It's like a fresh start to the week. <laughs> I'm never gonna get another degree, and now I miss it so much. So much, you wanna go back? I wanna go back to Berkeley. 
Dude, my whipped cream hella sunk in. Or <laughs> wait, yeah, it evaporated. It's gone. I but it looked good before. It looks so good. Yeah. See, good thing we got our pictures first. Huh? It's a good thing we got our pictures first. I know.